All right, we are in week nine. This is our last full week. Um, this is our last Monday, actually. Uh, we've obviously got today, we got Wednesday, we've got Friday, that should be brief, and then next week, um, just Wednesday and Friday of next week, because Monday's Memorial Day. So, um, if you'll go to Canvas and grab the notes on the module, or it's on this, the plan for the week, um, it says the test review notes. If you want to grab that, that's what we're going to work through together today. And then your homework will be the, like I basically made extra practice problems for you guys to do, work on on your own. That will be your homework until I see you again on Wednesday. Wednesday is your test. Please make sure that you're on time. If not early, I can get in a little bit early so we can get set up. You want to make sure that you're on your second device connecting to the Zoom call so you can use your iPad for the work. Um, you can either use the iPad split your screen between Safari and Notability to show your work or you can do a scrap piece of paper. Just make sure you're labeling that work carefully so that when I submit and I'm looking for the work, I can find it. Um, these all take a little bit of work, like maybe one of the questions doesn't take much work, but the rest of them definitely take work. So you definitely need to be organized. You need to be um, neat with your work so that I can give you the credit for those questions. If you don't have the work, you don't wanna lose credit for questions because you don't have the work even though you know what you're doing, you got your answers right. Mark off Alyssa and Andrew. Good morning, Alyssa. Good morning, Andrew. All right, so this is what the review note looks like. Again, you want to get this open. We are going to fill in the formulas on the left-hand side and then work out the examples on the right-hand side. And then, like I said, I, I have posted an extra set of examples for you to work on. This is probably the best review you can do. Um, I tried to have it go even in the same order as your test so that it's not confusing. Um, and then you can use this note to help you reference, you know, your, your um, formulas and all that good stuff. So I would say if you are, you know, like in an environment in which you're normally not maybe focused, do something today. Shift your behavior today so that you know that you are like totally paying attention. Uh, like Ethan... I don't need to stare at your side of your face for the next 45 minutes. That's not helpful for a test review. Um, those of you that I, I can't see you, it's fine. You just better make sure that you're paying attention because obviously this is your last opportunity to make a big impact on your grade. So if you could make this a positive impact, it would be a really good thing. All right, so the first couple ones, which are the easy ones. These are the different ones you want to be careful because these should be the easy gimme points, right? Um, our circumference and then area. And then so it goes in order that we did it. This 10-6 was circumference and arc length and um, we started by reviewing what how you find the circumference of a circle so there's two ways to find the circumference of the circle one is 2 pi r and one is pi times the diameter and then you will leave these answers in terms of pi you'll bump pi to the end and you'll leave them in terms of pi so a says find the circumference of a circle with a radius of 12 centimeters this is a radius and this is the mistakes a couple of you made on your test so make sure you're careful with what they're giving you the radius is 12 which means i'm going to use 2 pi r here and i would do 2 times pi times 12 bump the pi to the end and just multiply 12 times 2 and i get the circumference is 24 pi if it's multiple choice it's going to give you the units like centimeters just like that if it's not multiple choice and you have to type in your answer, you it won't have a pi in it, so it wouldn't be a question like this. This one will definitely be multiple choice. But if it was something that you're typing in the answer, you will leave the units off of it. Units would not be part of your answer. All right, B says find the circumference of uh, a circle with a diameter of 12 pi. So this time I've got a diameter, right? So I'm gonna use that second formula which is C equals just pi times the diameter. C would equal pi times 12, and we bump the 12 to the front and the pi to the back, and it would just be 12 pi centimeters. So again, be careful. Make sure you identify what it's giving you because if this is multiple choice, which this kind of question would be, it's certainly gonna have both answers. It's gonna have it as though it was the radius and as the diameter, so be careful. Questions on circumference? Hopefully we're feeling confident on that one. Okay, then came arc length. So the formula for the length of the arc is the measure of the arc over 360 times 2 pi r. 
And for these, you'll simplify them as much as you can. You'll leave them in terms of pi, so you'll still leave pi on there. This is probably where you definitely want to have access to a calculator because these numbers are going to get a little bit big and a little bit trickier. So if I look at that example for arc length, it's finding the length of arc AB, which is the, the pink arc. I'm going to find the measure of that arc, which is the same as the measure of the angle. So it's 120 over 360 times 2 times pi times the radius, which is 10. Now the easiest thing to do with these is put all of this over 1 and bump the pi to the end. So it would be 120 over 360 times 2 over 1 times 10 over 1 and put the pi at the end. If you want to simplify the 120 over 360, you can, but you don't need to. You can take and multiply out all your numerators. So 120 times 2 times 10, and that's 2,400. And then take and multiply out all your denominators, which there's only one, right? 360 times 1 times 1 is just 360 times pi. And then do 2,400 divided by 360. And it's 6.67, so I'm going to round it to 6.7 pi. Pi is still part of your answer, and the unit actually is still centimeters, not squared because it's not area yet. So again, we did 120 because that's the measure of the arc over 360 times pi times the radius, which is 10 squared. I pushed the pi to the end and squared the 10, so it's 100 over 1. Multiplied 120 times 100, and that's 12,000. Put it over 360 and let your calculator divide 12,000 by 360, and you get 33.3 .3 pi centimeters squared. all the prisms and the pyramids and the cylinders and the cones. So for 11-2, um, we did prisms and cylinders. I tried to put it in this order so as not to confuse you, so just be really careful. And we're not doing lateral area and total area. We are only doing total or surface area, so I stuck just to that. So when you're looking at a prism, the total area or surface area, because you'll see those words used interchangeably, are 2B plus pH, where B is the area of the base, P is the perimeter of the base, and H is the height of the prism which is the segment that connects the two bases. So in a rectangular prism, it doesn't matter what you pick as the as the bases. We tend to pick the top and the bottom just to be consistent. With a cube, same thing, doesn't matter. But with a triangular prism, any shape that's different than a rectangle, like in a triangular prism, the triangles, those are the bases. So that's how you would know to pick those over the ba as the bases instead of a rectangle or a, squ or a square, like a cube. So if I look at A, all of these are just going to say find the surface area or find the total area, not lateral and then surface. It's just surface. So if I go to A, then this is a, tri a rectangular prism. I'm going to have to do 2B plus pH. So if I use the bottom side as the base, the bottom and the top would both be the bases. Then my B, which is the base area is 5 times 6, which is 30. And the perimeter is 5 plus 6 plus 5 plus 6, or 2 times 5 plus 2 times 6, which is 22. 
So then I take and just plug those into this equation. 2 times B is 30 plus the perimeter is 22 times the height. That's the only other thing we haven't used from our rectangular prism, which is 4. So I get 60 plus 88 or 148. If we were typing that answer in, I would just leave it as 148. If it's multiple choice, you're going to see unit squared on it if it doesn't have a measurement for the unit, like centimeter or, le or feet or anything like that. Questions on that one? Okay, B is a cube, so this one's the rectangular prism. B is a cube, but a cube is still a rectangular prism. It doesn't matter which ones we pick as the base and the height this time, so I'm going to pick the base as the bottom, so to be consistent with what we just did. This would still be 2B plus pH. B is going to be 3 times 3, because it's length times width on the base, would be 9. Perimeter would be 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, or 3 times 4, which is 12. And then I plug that into here. 2 times B is 9, plus perimeter is 12, times the height's the only other measurement we haven't used, which is 3. Eighteen plus thirty six, fifty four units squared. Questions on that one. All right, so two types of prisms where that are rectangular, which is just the straight-up rectangular prism, and then the cube. Then came the triangular prism. So formula is the same. It's still total area, surface area is still 2B plus pH. The difference is that the base is not a rectangle. The base is a triangle. So when I go to find B, the base area, I have to use one-half base times height. So when I look at this one, 2B plus pH, B is the area of the base, which is this triangle. It is a right triangle. So it's one-half base times height, or one-half four times three, two times three, which is six. That's the area of the base. Now here's the tricky part to get the perimeter. I have to know this side. I promise you it will be a triple. So this is why you want to know your triples instead of having to do the Pythagorean theorem. Your triples are 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10, 5, 12, 13, 7, 24, 25. Those are the, probably the most common ones. 8, 15, 17 is there too, but not as common. Which means if you look at just this shape here, this side is 3, this side is 4. If those are the legs, then I know the hypotenuse has to be 5. So I know the perimeter is 3 plus 4 plus 5 or 7 plus 5, which is 12. Then I know surface area is twice the base area, which is 6, plus the perimeter, which is 12, times the height, 
which is the segment connecting those two triangles, and I get 12 plus 120 or 132 units squared. Questions on triangular prisms. All right, then came the cylinder. So cylinder was a little bit easier because you don't have to guess what shape the base is. There's only one formula for cylinder. There's no such thing as slant height for a cylinder. So the total area or the surface area of the cylinder is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. And the only things you have to plug in are the R and the H. You have to square the R and then add these two together once you multiply. And you're going to leave pi in your answer. So if I look at the example that's there, you're finding, again, total area. Or surface area which is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. The radius is 6. The height is 10. So it's 2 times pi times 6 squared plus 2 times pi times 6 times 10. So then I want to square the 6. This would be 2 times pi times 36 plus 2 times pi times 60. Bump the pi's to the end of each one. So I have to do 2 times 36 times pi plus 2 times 60 times pi. Multiply it so it's 72 pi plus 120 pi. And I get 192 pi. And this time it's centimeters squared. So you will leave, this is another one that will be multiple choice because pi is going to be in your answer and I don't want you to have to type that in using a Greek calculator. I mean a Greek uh, keyboard. So these, these questions would be multiple choice. Okay, then came 11, 3, which were pyramids and cones. The good news here, only one kind of pyramid, the square pyramid is the only one we t we're going to talk about. And then the cone. The hard part is when they don't give you the slant height, so I took those off. I'm going to give you the slant height. I don't need to trick you. Just keep in mind that those problems do exist. Sometimes they give you the height and not the slant height, and you have to find the slant height using the Pythagorean theorem. The ones you're going to have on your test, I try to make as easy as possible, okay, that I just gave you the slant height. So the pyramids, the total area or the surface area, again, because they're interchangeable, for the pyramid is B plus one half PL, where B, again, is the area of the base. P is the perimeter of the base, and L is the slant height. So sometimes in the homework and stuff like that, I give you just I give you the height. You define the slant height using the Pythagorean theorem. Though again, that's not the case this time. If you look at the example that's there, which is similar to the one that's on your test. It gives you this slant height already. So I know I have to do 2B, no, not 2B, sorry, that's prism. I have to do B plus 1 half perimeter times the slant height. B is the area of the base, the base is a square, so it's 6 times 6, or 36. P is the perimeter of a square, so 6 plus 6 plus 6, 6 plus 6, or 4 times 6, which is 24. And then plug it in. B is 36 plus 1 half perimeters 24. Slant height is 10 because that's running along the side.
And then if I were you and you're not 100% comfortable or you want to double check your math, I would make this 36 plus 0 0.5 or 0 0.5, 24 times 10 and put that in the calculator, 36 plus 120, add those and you get 156. Okay, Daddy's out front. Yeah. And you get 156. If it was open-ended, you would leave it as 156. If it was multiple choice, it would say unit squared. This is pi r squared because there's only one base. There's only one circle plus pi r l and again um, I try to make it easy on you I'm not giving you the height where you have to find the slant height I'm giving you the slant height so the picture or the information in the text will have everything you need in terms of the pyramid and the cone so if I write over here pi r squared plus pi r l R is 8, L is 15. So even though it has the variable H on there, I don't need it. That would I would need that for volume, which we're going to get to in a while. I mean, next week, but you don't need it for um, area. So pi R is 8 squared plus pi 8 times L, which is 15. And I'm going to do 8 squared. This is pi times 64. 8 times 15. 120. Bump the pies to the back of both. And then they both have pi, so we can add them 184 pi. No unit, so it's unit squared. And again, that would be multiple choice because of the pie.